So this isn't a very fun story, but it's a trend that I think that we need to be increasingly watching out for. Bitcoin Cash, the minority cash on the internet offshoot of the top cryptocurrency, saw its price jump by about 5% on news of a now deleted press release. That press release claimed, we now know falsely, that the big grocery store chain Kroger's, which also owns Safeway, would begin accepting, you guessed it, Bitcoin Cash. Surprisingly, the release went up on Kroger's website. Uh, in addition to being sent out by wire. But when Coindesk contacted the company to confirm the story, they denied it. And the release has since been removed from the site and from distribution, with the price of Bitcoin Cash giving back all the gains it gained and more. David, this isn't the first time that we've seen something like this. And honestly, it feels like it's getting pretty common. What do you make of it? Yeah, uh, the most recent one, I believe, was the uh, release claiming that Walmart was going to accept, gosh, I'm already forgetting, what, what was it? Coin. It was like Litecoin, one, yeah. Right. Um, and unfortunately, we fell victim to that scam ourselves. This one, I think we caught. Um, the new wrinkle here is, as Adam pointed out, that this went up on Kroger's website, which, um, I mean, I don't want to get too crazy here, but it seems like it was an inside job um, in some sense. Like whoever was running the website or maybe somebody at Kroger had a bag and decided to unload it. <laughs> um, so we will, we will find out more about that. But the bigger point is, um, and, you know, it's a very subjective thing. And this is one of the things where your decisions are going to be informed by your experience in the space and how much nuance you have in understanding these things. But um, especially with Litecoin, it was, you know, it's sort of not the hottest currency in the world anymore. And so um, you, you see these things and you have to kind of take a second look. Um, Bitcoin Cash, I think, is a little bit is equally sort of on the bubble in terms of relevancy. So uh, some of these might be um, just kind of bids for a little bit of attention from somebody who's tired of holding an asset that's not really doing anything interesting. Um, Naomi, what are your takes on uh, fraud? I mean, this is you're, uh, you're not, it's a tough thing to stop. It's a tough thing to stop. And how do, you, how do you there. deal with it? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I would say that, that Bitcoin I mean, it cash... Seems like it. Yeah, yeah. Bitcoin Cash, I mean, it's something actually that I use every day. So for people who use crypto in payments, it is one of the most popular because it's accepted on purse.io, for example. So you can buy anything on Amazon, get like a 33% discount. So it is popular for those people. But the problem is, is that the sector of people who use crypto every day is like a tiny fraction of a mm -hmm. percent. And most people are like just, you know, stocking up uh, for savings. But what I just want to kind of dig into what you both mentioned about this appearing on the Kruger's website, right? Because this is being portrayed as this fraudulent release. Now, I, I'm I'm guessing like at least one of one of three things, one of at least three things could have happened, right? Either it was fraud and someone was uh, doing an inside job and they're trying to pump their bags, or it was fraud and someone within Kruger's <laughs> was just an idiot and was like, oh, there's a press release that isn't on our website. Quick, put it up to catch up. You know, I, that was my bad. <laughs> I should have put that release on our website. Or the other side, it maybe was a, a mistaken release. Maybe there is something like this in the world. And maybe they put it out early and maybe when Coindesk, you know, confirmed it, they were like, oh, you know, no, no, this isn't what we're doing. Um, I mean, there, it, it's interesting because it's slightly different to what happened with Litecoin, where it literally was just a fraudulent press release. The web domain was created five days prior to the Litecoin release. It was someone trying to pump their bags. This one, how did it get on Kroger's website? That is right. my question. Like, I mean, it's, it's so... Memory. I have an idea. <laughs> All right, go so, for it. So, so, so here, here's the other thing. I think, I think the, all the all the uh, scenarios you laid out are totally valid, and we don't know what the right answer. But the one other thing that this really kind of struck me as is that, you know, there aren't a lot of ways that you can monetize compromising uh, a company's external website. Right? You can embarrass them, mm. but you really can't do much to make money unless you do something like this, right? Because then you scared, you yeah. know non right like it's non public information because it's of course something you're going to fake. Um, but you yeah, get it up. You hack the, you hack the website. Is the ultimate non-public information. Exactly. You, you, you <laughs> hack you hack a company's website like Kroger's. You put this release out again. Like somebody from the company probably isn't going to notice Ooh. because I mean, who would notice something like that? And then that kind of gives it this veneer of authenticity. So yeah, again, like I think that there's lots of stories to kind of talk about here. But it is something where now that we have these liquid markets, we're we're starting to see uh, this happen more and more. You scare often. me, Adam. Welcome yeah, to and if there's one. If there's one lesson from this, it is beef up the security on your websites, whether you are running, you know, a gas pipeline company or whether you have, you know, critical infrastructure or it's just like a grocery chain. You guys really need to be thinking in the 21st century about uh, digital security. Huge, huge pressing topic.